Hi, my name is Bahad al In this video lecture, we are going to introduce the limits. And we're going to discuss about the two problems, the tangent line problem and the instant velocity problem with respect to the limits and with respect to the necessity of the limits. So first of all, I would like to start our lecture with, uh, with discussions about the lines. So we've discussed in the previous lectures that we can construct a line through the two points. If you are given two points, you can construct the equation of the line. So let's do an example. So let's say you are given the two points. So let's say you're given the point A was the coordinates 1 and 1, and the B was the coordinates 2 and 4. And I would like to figure out the equation of the line through these two points. So the n equation of the line is going to be given in the form of kx plus b, where the k is going to be the slope of the line and the b is going to be the y-intercept. And we can find the slope of the line by just formula. So the y2 minus y1 divided as x2 minus x1. So where y1, y2, x1, x2 are the coordinates of the two points. So here it is going to be x1, y1, and here it's going to be x2, y2. So we just need to plug them in to the formula in order to calculate the slope of the line. So this is going to be 4 minus 1. So let me write this 4 minus 1 divided as a 2 minus 1. That's going to be equal to the 3. So now we have a better look to the equation of the of the line. So it is going to be a y is equal to the 3x plus the b. And we just need to find a b. The thing is, so this line is passing through this point or this point. So it means that if I just plug in the coordinates of the points, for example, the coordinate of the point b into this equation, it should work. Right? So let me substitute this. So 4 is equal to the 3 times the 2 plus the b. So from here, it is clear that the b should be equal to the minus 2. Right. OK, so the equation of the line passing through these two points is going to be equal to passing through these two points A and B is going to be equal to Y is equal to the 3X minus T. So now let's discuss about the problem of the tangent line. So if you are given the curve, so let me draw the coordinate axis, some coordinate axis and some functions here. So this is going to be the X. And that's going to be the y. And if you are given some curve, the tangent line is going to be the line which just which just touches this curve at some point, at one point. So this is going to be the tangent line. So that's the tangent line. So in this regard, uh, I really like the word tangent because from the Greek, tangent means touches. So this is the line which just touches the curve. So this is going to be the curve. This is the line touches the curve at a single point. So now if you're given the equation of this curve, how we can figure out the equation of the tangent line. So let's try to do this in an example. OK, so we are given the function y is equal to the x and x squared, and we need to find the equation of the tangent line, equation of the tangent line at the point A was the coordinates 1 and 1. Okay, so this is going to be our problem. And first of all, I would like to sketch the curve uh, in order to imagine what we have to do. So I'm going to put the coordinate system to here, like this. So we need to put the points now, right? So the points are going to be the 0, 0 point. So when x is equal to the 1, y is equal to the 1. When x is equal to the minus 1, y is equal to the 1. When x is equal to the t, it's going to be a 4. So let me put this. Let's assume that this is 4, and so on. So I'm just going to connect all of those points. and get this kind of curve. So this is going to be y is equal to the x in the square. So what we have to do is we need to just create the line which is passing through this point, and we need to figure out its equation. So that's going to be the tangent line. So can we figure out the equation of a line through one point? 
they probably know because like there are infinitely many lines passing through this point right for example this line or this line so there are many lines passing through this this point okay but the, the definition of the tangent line is something different it is not the line which is passing through this point through one point on the curve this is the line which just touches the curve okay so in order to do this what i have to do is i need to figure out the two points on the curve and try to connect them so let's assume that i'm going to choose this point for example okay so then i'm just going to connect these two points okay so this is going to be the red line the red line is going to be the approximation approximation to the tangent line okay the problem is i can't really find the equation of the tangent line just using one point but i can choose the second point close to the first point in order to find the equation of the tangent line okay so this point so let's let's try to find this equation by the way so or let's try to find it it's um it's slope right so this point here white point is has the coordinates one and one so we need to find the equation of the tangent line here. And this red point is going to have the coordinates uh, 2 and 4. OK, so the slope of the red line, so when x is equal to the t, right? So when x is equal to the t, the slope of the line is going to be equal to the 4 minus 1 divided to the t minus 1, which is going to be equal to the 3. Well, of course, this red line is not the same as the white line. And what we can do in order to get a line which is even closer to the white line, we can choose the point on this curve closer to the white point, right? For example, this line now is going to be even closer to the white line. So what is the slope of this blue line? So when x is equal to, so let's say it's going to be 1.5, right? So And the y coordinate is going to be 1.5 in the square. Okay, so they, when x is equal to the 1.5, then the slope of the line is going to be 1.5 in the square minus 1 divided to the 1.5 minus 1. It is going to be 2.25 divided to the 0.5, or minus 1, sorry. It is going to be equal to the 2 and a half. Okay, or what we can do now in order to improve our re result even better. So what we can do is we can choose the next point even closer to this white point, right? So we can come closer and closer. For example, if x is equal to the 1.25, it is going to be equal, so the k is going to be equal to the 1.25 in the square minus 1 divided to the 1.25 minus 1. And if you make all of the calculations, you're going to get the answer 2.25. Okay, so you can get this point very close to the 1, for example, you can get this point to be equal to the 1.01, right, then just substitute this in order to calculate the slope, it is going to be 1.01 in the square minus 1 divided to the 1.01 minus 1, it is going to be, so let, let me use a calculator, say 1.01 in the square minus 1 times the 100, um, it is going to be equal to the 2.01. 2.01 okay you see so as we are coming closer and closer to the one right so we started from the t and we're coming closer and closer to the one the values of the slopes are coming closer and closer to the t so this is what we call the limit so we just denote this process what we have just done as the limit of x in the square minus one divided to the x minus one when x goes to the one right so we are coming to the one very closely is equal to the two so this is what we call the limit and this is why we need the limit so we need the limit for example in order to find the slope of the tangent lines where it is impossible to find the slope just using one point okay so cool so now we can find the equation of the tangent line because we know what is the slope right so the slope is equal to the two so that is why the equation of the tangent line is going to be 2x plus b. And if we know that this line is passing through this point 1 and 1, and if I just plug this point into this equation, it should work. So I'm just going to plug 1 instead of y is equal to the 2 times the 1 instead of x because the coordinates of this point are of this point are 1 and 1 plus the b. And from here we can figure out that the b is equal to the minus 1. So while well, the equation of the tangent line is going to be y is equal to the 2x minus 1. 
So I'm just going to put the here. So the equation of this tangent line is going to be y is equal to the 2x minus 1. So you see, so we can find the equation of the of a line, of the tangent line, which is just touches the curve at a single point, right, using the limits. Well, this is one of the important problems. So, and, and we are going to uh, give some meanings to the tangent lines. So in general, the tangent line would mean the rate of change of the curve or of something. Uh, and, 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 and in this regard, the limits are very useful to find the tangent lines. So another problem which I would like to see is, which I would like to solve is the problem of the instant velocity. Instant velocity. So I'm going to start with the with the concept of the average velocity. So let's say I've got uh, so I've got you who's going to walk some long distance. So let's say you walk ten kilometers. So you walk ten kilometers in three hours. So I would like to know what is your average velocity, okay, between these two points. So here and here. So if you would like to find the velocity, so you just need to divide the distance which you covered, which is 10 kilometers, to the time which is elapsed. So that's going to give you the average velocity. So this is going to be 3.33 kilometers per hour. So that's going to be your speed or your velocity. Okay. The problem is this is the average velocity. Average velocity. Okay, so let's say this is going to be the time, okay? So you started from the zero, you ended in three hours. But the thing is, so at some stage, you might walk really, really fast. Okay, so you're walking very fast. But at some points, so you would just stay, okay? You would just like stay there and drinking some coffee and say, on. okay? So, so it doesn't really reflect your velocity at the given point. So this 3.33 is the average. So your velocity sometimes would be 5 or 6. At some points, it would be simply 0. But in average, it is 3.33. So now the, the thing is, I would like to find, let's say, what is going to be your velocity exactly at this point t0? What is the instant velocity? Instant velocity at this point t0, so, and how we can find the velocity. You see, so in order to find the velocity, you need to know the distance, right? And you have to divide this to the, to the time. Uh, and the problem here, you just you just need to know, for example, so here, you might know only the distance which you carry until the t0, right? And you don't know anything else. So from the engineering point of view, we can solve this problem approximately by just choosing a small interval around the t0. Okay, so for example, we can know how much distance has been covered until here. So how much distance has been covered, for example, until this point, and by just subtracting, we can figure out how much distance has been covered in this interval. And by just dividing this to the length of the interval, we can figure out the average velocity in, a, in the small interval around the t0, and that's going to be approximately the instant velocity. Okay, so let's do a problem. So let's say you're going to drop a ball from a tower. So that's that's a ball, and you're going to drop this down from the tower with the height 440 meters. And, and it appears you can figure out, you can know the distance which has been carried by this ball at every instant of the time using this formula, so which is going to be a 4.9 t in the square. Okay, what does it mean? It means that at the zero, it is going to be simply zero. So it just stays here. So this is going to be S is equal to the zero. Okay, well, after one second, you're going to cover, this ball is going to cover 4.9 meters. Okay, after two seconds, it is going to cover 4.9 times to the four meters and so on. Okay, so what I want to know is what is the, what is the, instant velocity velocity at the time to be equal to the five seconds after five seconds exactly okay what is the instant velocity so in this case i'm going to solve this problem in a very much similar way as we did before okay so i'm going to find the distance which is covered until t is equal to the 5.1 uh, for example 5.1 seconds 
Okay, then I'm going to find the distance which is covered until five seconds. T is equal to the five seconds, okay? Then the difference between this distance and this distance is going to give me the distance between this five and 5.1, okay? So the average velocity in this interval between five and 5.1 is going to be equal to, so the distance as at the point 5.1 minus the distance at the point five divided to the 5.1 minus five, right? And if I just plug in all the numbers together to here, so this is going to be now, so 4.9 times 5.1 in the square, because I know that the distance which is carried after 5.1 seconds can be found using this formula, right? And if I just plug this to here, it is going to be 4.9 times the 5 in the square divided to the 0 0.1, and that's going to be 49.49 meters per second. Okay, so this is what I did in order to find the um the, the the instant velocity here after five seconds but the problem is so it is not the same as the instant velocity right so this is the approximation so what i can make in order to improve my approximation i can choose this interval even smaller right so why don't you just choose this interval not between five and five point one but for example five and five point zero five 5.05. So if you just plug in all the numbers, like s at the 5.05 minus s at the 5 divided to the 0 0.05 in this case, it is going to be equal to the 49.245 meters per second. So why don't we just get this interval even smaller, like a velocity, the average velocity between 5 and 5.01, let's say. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be 4.9 times 5.01 in the square minus 4.9 times the 5 in the square divided to the 0 0.1, right? So, or 0 0.01, sorry, 0 0.01. And in this case, it is going to be 49.049 meters per second. Or we can get this even closer, the velocity between 5 and 5.001. In this case, 4.9 times 5.001 in the square minus 4.9 times the 5 in the square divided to the 0 0.001. And this is going to be equal to the 49.0049. Okay, so you see here, so as we are coming closer and closer, as we are just squeezing this interval, so as we are making this interval smaller, and smaller, these values are becoming closer and closer to the 49. So we can express all of this process which we did in terms of the limit. So we can write this down in this way. So the limit of s at the time plus the h, right, plus some uh, pl plus some point. So you see, so I, 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 did th I did this here, right? So minus the s at the time divided to the h when h goes to the zero, so it basically makes the interval smaller and smaller, is going to reach, right, so 49 meters per second. So this is how I can write down this process which we, which we have just done, okay? So this process is called, like, finding the limits, okay? So, uh, and we just found the limits, um, and, and, and it gave us the instant velocity at exactly one point okay so in this case i didn't find the average velocity i found the instant velocity you see so the limits are very important okay so it helps us to find the instant instant rate of change of something for example the instant rate of change of the distance or the instant rate of change of the velocity or many other functions and we need the limits in order to calculate the instant rate of changes. So this was the small motivation for you and, and, and some examples why we would need the limits. And in our next video lectures, we are going to discuss about uh, more quantitative things, how to calculate the limits themselves. So thank you very much for your attention, and I hope that this was very helpful to you.